Welcome back to FLJ, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're talking about one of the oldest and contemporarily active Linux distros with great significance. With the release of Debian 12 Aka Bookworm, the developers are releasing the next Toy Story character. In this video, I'll show you what to expect from Bookworm. Is it worth it for you, etc.? My name is Michael and I've been a passionate Linux user for over 20 years. Now, grab a coffee and let's go! The first version of Debian was released in 1969, a year before the Debian project was started by Ian Murdoch constitutionally. The Debian project is a non-profit, non-commercial project made up of volunteer developers who agree to follow the Debian social contract. Today, over 1000 official developers participate in Debian. Debian is the basis for many other great distros, including Ubuntu, MX Linux, LMDE, or Q4OS. Debian 12 Bookworm is the latest Debian stable release. At any time, there are three parallel maintained editions of Debian. The order already tells how the development is going. Unstable is like an upstream branch. The packages are submitted here, which can be transported to testing after a certain testing phase and grace period. If they are bug free, testing is the next stable branch. This is where newer packages are slowly hung out so that they are both tested and bug free for the next stable release. Stable is the official Debian version. It is considered extensively tested and extremely robust and stable. Nothing is changed in the included software packages apart from security updates and serious corrections in exceptional cases. The additions from the stable branch have code names divert from Toy Story. What's new? Linux kernel 6.1 LTS series, 11,089 more software packages than Bullseye, Gnome Shell 43, KDE Plasma 5.27, LXDE 11, LXQT 1.2.0, Marty 1.26, XFCE 4.18. And last but not least, loosening of the guidelines for dealing with non-free firmware. Let's come to the specs. The following key points serve as a guide to the lower edge of minimum requirements. 1 GHz minimum Pentium 4 CPU or newer, 265 MB RAM, 1 GB recommended, 10 GB hard disk. This applies to Fraggle desktops. If you install KDE or GNOME, you should use better specs. Debian is the epitome of a static LTS distro. This means that the packages you find now will still be there in three years. But this with a few exceptions like Firefox or Thunderbird. They are primarily only security updates. Debian supports a bag full of architectures. Here's the list. The package management is APT. In addition, there is Synaptic and depending on your desktop, there is an app center such as GNOME Software Center or KDE Discover. Now let's come to important hacks and commands. If you want to update a system, you can do it graphically or via terminal. In the console, I would recommend the following important commands. Refresh sources sudo apt update. Updating system sudo apt upgrade. Removing unnecessary packages after updating sudo apt auto remove. If you install Flatpak on the system, then how to refresh Flatpak packages, Flatpak update. The fully automated update change would look like this sudo apt update, ampersand, ampersand, sudo apt upgrade, minus y, ampersand, ampersand, sudo apt auto remove, minus y. And in case of you have Flatpak on the system, you have to add ampersand, ampersand, Flatpak update, minus y. You could put these commands in a script and schedule it via cron job. However, you will then no longer have the control over the update. Graphically, you can also use GNOME Software Center or KDE Discover. Let me show you GNOME Software Center. If you watch for updates here, they will list it here to you and you can download and install them. You can also use Synaptic for system updates. Debian appeals to system administrators in the server environment where it scores with its high stability. However, Debian can also convenience on the desktop. Especially on the desktop, it is important to know that the software package status remain unchanged with Debian and primarily only security updates are offered within the scope of the support range. Thus, a very stable but at the same time not very modern desktop is offered. 
Let's come to the system measurement. My system with GNOME desktop reserved 9.6 GB from the disk. The memory requirement was 1.4 GB of RAM. The number of installed packages after first start was 2325 Debian packages. At the time of creating this video, GNOME Shell 43.4 was shipped. With this, after a long development with GNOME, the whole libadvisor wider design variant returns to Debian. This means you can no longer simply load themes into the system. Instead, you are bound to predefined design guidelines and you can no longer customize the system with such an extent. Debian ships GNOME Shell unchanged. By default, no extensions are active. We are talking about vanilla GNOME here. If this is too rudimentary for you, we don't even have window elements for maximizing and minimizing. Let me show you. You have only here the close button. If you press the button, the window is away. If this is not your taste, then the GNOME Tweak tool is the first place to go. Let me show you. Here we have the writer window title bars. And here you can add minimize and maximize if you want. You can also change the position to left or right. I will keep it on the right for now. The operation is more geared to control via trackpad, touchpad or keyboard mappings. Some people like this, others not so much. I belong to later group and install several extensions on my desktop. If you'd like to know what extensions, just write it in the comments, then I will come up with a follow-up video. In general, the desktop is poorly equipped. I like the Debian 12 design better than its predecessor. Generally, only GNOME 43 wallpapers are included and a few Debian's own. But I think this will not be a key changer for you to switch to Debian now, honestly. Let's come to the pre-installed software. We have Linux kernel 6.1. As browser, there's Firefox ESR. As email client, there's Thunderbird and GNOME Evolution. As office package, there's LibreOffice 7.4. And as software container, there is non pre installed. Let's come to the general pre installed software. In terms of software, a diet could have a positive effect. Debian pre installs too many games, in my opinion. If the range of GNOME games were not pre-installed by default, I would be quite satisfied. However, why Thunderbird and Evolution are installed is beyond me. Who needs to mail clients? I don't want to be picky, but the pre-selection of software seems a bit peculiar to me. Now, let's have a look. Side 2. Here is Side 3. It reminds me a bit of the earlier Ubuntu days. More precisely, the Ubuntu pre-installed software in the past in the normal installation. There were many crackware apps pre-installed. It is not as much here, but the taste is uh, a little bit Ubuntu-like for me. So please skip games and so on. And I think the software stack is small and should be fine for most. After what feels like 100 years, Debian has revised the policies for dealing with proprietary firmware. This means that the activation of contrib and non-free packages in the sources list is a little bit easier. And now non-free firmware is by default active. A very good decision in my opinion. This way you can participate from non-open source drivers and software. There are still Wi-Fi cards as well as graphic cards where the proprietary driver can be the better or even the only choice. Debian 12 comes with a total of 64,419 packages. Compared to Debian Bullseye, 6,296 packages have been removed and 11,089 packages have been added. Debian 12 continues to rely primarily on extended for file systems. It is well known from Debian 11 installation that other file systems such as ButterFS are possible. I always have a Debian testing VM at the start. This means I have been testing Bookworm for a very long time. I have not encountered any bugs or problems here. Debian has a high degree of reliability and stability. This is already noticeable when preparing a stable version in the testing branch. Now let's come to my conclusion. Bookworm is by not means the big revolution. However, for GNOME users, one could speak from a bigger leap from the old GNOME 3 environment of Bullseye. And even compared to Ubuntu 2204, Debian 12 is much more modern now.
but this will change next year. So I mention it only for informative purpose. Debian 12 Bookworm is a solid and consistent continuation of the stable branch. Currently the packages are largely still quite up to date, but that's the bitter pill to swallow with LTS distros. At the package progress, they will age accordingly. Debian Bullseye will become old stable and Buster will soon become LTS. So when to upgrade? Not yet. My rule of thumb is on the desktop from the second point release and on the server from the third point release. Yes, that thought. I know, but if you follow this script, the likelihood of running into any errors is extremely low. If you are absolutely impatient on the desktop because of the new GNOME shell, etc., you should wait at least until the first point release. I know, with Debian the risk of bugs is low because of the long testing freeze, but if you run into a bug, you have to deal with it. Keep that in mind. What are your impressions of Debian 12? When will you switch? Please write your opinion in the comments. I am already curious. If you like watching Linux videos, this is the right time for a free channel subscription. Feel free to give a thumbs up and activate the bell, then you will be updated in the future. Thanks for the kind attention, ladies and gentlemen. See you soon. Peace.